Welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast, where we interview experts in various fields with the goal of empowering women to make informed decisions about their health, life, and family. I'm your host, Amy Jane Smith, and I would like to thank you for tuning in today to get comfy while I introduce our next guest. Hello and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy and I'm your host today and we are back for part two of our podcast with New Zealand super nanny Jessie Buttons where we are talking about the common parenting mistakes. So if you missed part one, the part, the um, link will be in the show notes. So please go back and have a look at that. Today, so last time we spoke, we were talking about the general common parenting mistakes. This week, we are looking at parenting mistakes for each different natured child. If you're not sure what the four natures of children are, I will link to that podcast as well that we did a couple of months ago now. And you can learn up about that before diving into this one. So without further ado, let's get going. Welcome back, Jesse. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Great to be here. Fabulous. So, um, so last time we were talking about the general mistakes, and this week we were talk- going to be talking about um, the mistakes for each natured child. Is that right? Yep. Specific mistakes that parents can unintentionally make depending on each child's nature. Shall we do a quick recap on the different natures? Sure. Yep. I mean, we've mentioned before, but just in case. Absolutely. Yep. So we've got social and strong. These are our extroverted natures. Social Mm -hmm. is our cheeky, bouncy, buoyant nature, and strong is our more forward-moving, determined nature. And then we've got our two lower-moving, introverted natures, the sensitive and the structured. And the sensitives are the intuitive, nurturing peacemakers. And then the structured kids are our more serious, very literal, step back and observe first um, nature. Thank you. So okay. those are the four. Where so do we want to start? going to talk about um, mistakes that parents make for each nature. And they're based on... Um, so we spoke about the different needs of each nature. So these mistakes are really around not meeting those needs and what and what that kind of looks like so we'll start with the social nature so the social nature these are our our light cheeky um kind of bouncy buoyant natures and they have a high need for lightness in their in their world in their home Um, so if the environment is too rigid too overly structured or too tense or too heavy Um, or if they're not allowed to be kind of random. Um, These are the kids that have have these random sayings, they make random noises, they've got random movements. And if they, if if, if those qualities are seen as, you know, too silly or too immature, or, you know, you're too much for this space, you're too loud, um, it can be quite shaming. And you will start to see um, unwanted behavior due to that kind of heaviness or that feeling of being boxed in or stifled. Mm. Um, So most traditional school settings are ones that children need to sit and learn um, for for long periods of time. Sit down, face the front, listen up, don't move, stop fidgeting. Um, And so children often come home and they just need to kind of, they just need to have this release of random quirkiness. Yeah. Um, so it's really important to see that as a quality and, and value it. Um, so just 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 let them. My message is for parents of social kids, just let them. Let them sing at the top of their lungs. Um, let them roll around on the shaggy mat if they need to make random noises. And, and just be lighthearted if you need to, if, if it gets too much, which, which it does. Um, just be really lighthearted about it and just say, use the criticism sandwich technique, which is 
I just, I love how funny you are. You've got so many great ideas, but in this space with all of us here, you know, let's, let's go outside and we can play together or something. So it's kind of like, say something positive, tell them what you're wanting and finish it with something positive. Oh, I haven't heard that. So that is a mistake that I do see a lot of parents making with their social children, telling them to, um, to stop being who they are naturally. And we don't want to do that. We want to see their, their quirkiness and we want to appreciate that they bring a lot of joy to the family. We want them to know that that's what we love about them. Mm, just thinking so about that's... social children. Um, if, say, if the parent's more of a structured or a sensitive type they could be quite overwhelming i'm just thinking i have a feeling that i've mentioned this to you in the past i think my husband's a structured person and mm -hmm. i'm pretty sure his sister is a social she is bubbly and effervescent and yeah and him and his dad all go right i'm going to this room yeah <laughs> we're gonna go over here it's too loud and I'm wondering if, yeah, if parents can get overwhelmed if they're not of a similar type. Definitely. Yep. Yep. And sometimes if the parent is the same type as well, so if you get a social parent and a social child, even they can clash. Right. For lots of different reasons, but quite often I have parents going, oh, just my, my child just irritates me. He's just, I don't know. And it's often like, well, they're exactly the same as you. <laughs> chip off and, the old block. Yeah, chip off the old block. But yeah, definitely different energy levels. And you parents can create a little bit of structure around, um, you know, the family room is, the, these, are the ru these are the rules for the family room. And it might be that it's, it's inside voices. But hey, in the, in the garage and in your own bedrooms, down the hallway, whatever the rule is, you can be as loud and quirky and as random as you want. But when we're all together in the lounge and we've got all these different natures and energy types and different needs, we're just going to set a blanket rule. Mm. And that kind of keeps everybody happy, keeps the structured nature from being like, oh, he's overwhelming and they're doing this and complaining about it. Yeah. And it just makes everybody feel a little bit more secure. Right. So that's the social nature. The strong natured child they yeah. have a high need for moving forward and getting results. So a common mistake that is often made is parents not letting them get that result mm -hmm. um, or, or somehow they're getting stopped in, in the middle of their mission. So these are our kids that are like, they get this idea and they're like, right, I'm going I'm to do this thing and they try and move forward with their thing. Yeah. And they don't really think it through, they're not the planners, they're not yeah. the detail gatherers, they just go, oh yeah, that's good, and they launch into it. They're kind of like fire, ready, aim. Yeah. <laughs> so um, a story that I like to tell is when I was fostering, I had a 10 year old and I had an idea that we were gonna make a bird feeder because I had an empty um, Sprite bottle oh. and I had some bird seed and I was like, we can make a bird feeder. So we went about making this bird feeder and the picture had, was hanging in a tree. And so we did all the steps and we had the bird feeder ready, but I didn't have anything to hang it up in the tree. And I said, look, when we go, when we go down to the farm, we'll get some baling twine and we can hang it in the tree. And I just went about my business. Little did I know, he snuck out, climbed over the fence, went to the church next door with his um, toolbox and took off the chain that was over the driveway, removed it completely, climbed back over the fence and hung the bird feeder up in the tree. And then he called, he, he was just like, hey, this, this, this makes sense. I fixed it. And he was outside, called me and he was outside looking at it, admiring his, he was so pleased with himself. And so I had to realise that's his nature. He's got to see the result. He's got to follow through and get that thing done so that he can step back. And um, and I, I was, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't tell him off because I thought that was that's brilliant. Um, so I did say, look, we, we will have to put that chain back, but we're going to go down right now and we're going to buy another chain because I, I can see that he just needed to complete it. Yeah. So structured, uh, sorry, strong-natured 
kids love to see results of their efforts. Mm. And if they can't get that result, they get really irritable. So, uh, you know, a common mistake that parents, I see parents doing is, is stopping them or blocking them or saying you can't do that, or it's not safe or something like that. So they've got to get beside them, got to get alongside them and go with them. And then you can kind of steer them in the direction. You can have a little bit more um, power over them if you get, if they think you're on their side, you need to be on their side. Um, another example is, is, is a puzzle. I brought my niece, who is a strong nature, a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And I decided a thousand piece puzzle would be great because they love a challenge. But it was actually, it, she couldn't see any results soon enough. So she was just like, no, nah, mm. I'm, just, I'm just not even interested. Um, and that made me think, oh yeah, that's, you kind of got to break it down so that they can see the results quicker. So the first result might be finding all the edges and then stepping back and admiring and going, step one, I've completed it. I got it done, got that result. So mm. you can kind of break it down. Otherwise it's just like too big, never get a result. Um, and parents can also step back and help and admire the results with their child. So as soon as you see that they've achieved something, go, wow, look what you did, you got it done. Or if they're like shooting hoops, the basketball, you're like, you can say, yes, you did it, you got it, you got the goal. And that kind of gives them that feeling of, yes, I did it, I got it. Yeah. So that is the strong nature. They a need strong -natured, quick results. Are they liable to get frustrated when they don't get their own way and don't see the results quick enough? Are they liable to be a bit more, I don't know, more physical or boisterous with Definitely. how they present yep. their frustrations? Yep, they relate to the world physically, so they're very hands-on. So they love projects and things like that, but they want to see the result. They want to create something. They've got a, a goal in mind and they take action to complete it. The, there's, there's kind of like a cycle. The socials have got the ideas. Mm -hmm. The sensitives, they gather all the details and make the plan. The strongs start it, they get it into action, they kind of move it along and complete it and get it done. They're the, like the results. And then the structured can improve it. So the structured can step back, see it as a big picture and can kind of see where things need to be improved. That's kind of like the cycle. Right. Um, they all have the right. qualities. So the sensitive natured child. So these are our um, more well, they're more sensitive. There's really no other way to say it. This is and our favorite type. They, they, yeah, this, yeah this is, these are our favorite people, Amy. Yeah. Yes, these natures are all about being comfortable. Okay, so especially the younger the child, the more, the more they need to feel that comfort. These are our snuggly kids. So in order for them to feel comfortable, they like to gather details about their world and everyone mm -hmm. in it and who's coming and going. Um, and so a common mistake that parents make is not giving them the details about what's happening in the world. Who's coming? Who's going? When's grandma coming to stay? Is she, how long is she staying? And that sort of thing. So mm. they need information about their world. Um, families that work with me, I give them a big A2 visual weekly schedule. And it's laminated so they can go straight away and write on it. Yeah. And every time there's a sensitive nature in the house, they are the kids that are standing in front of it the most, looking at it, going, oh, daycare and play date. And they're just, they're just looking. They just want to know who's coming. You're laughing because this is you, eh? This, is, this you. is me. I'm just remembering back to when I was in primary school and we had a chore chart. And I remember being asked to do something or told to do something it kind of never really got done but when I saw it when it all, all of a sudden got put on the wall and it was right Monday Amy's doing this and it was okay I still had to get mm. pushed in the mm. right direction but it was Amy's doing this and I still have little timers that go off on my phone to say today you're doing this yeah 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 and, yeah and I think all natures we, we all need it I mean I need yeah. a visual schedule I love to see things in front of me I love to yeah. have it all out but the sensitive natured children, they can get anxious really quickly if they mm. don't know what's happening. Um, so if, if, if you can give them as much detail as possible, 
that will help in that area. The more information they have, and, and this has got to be age dependent, obviously. Um, you're not going to go and tell them what's happening in the world and what's on the news. You just tell them what's happening in their world. Yeah, you don't tell your five-year-old exactly why you can't go and see grandma at the moment. You so just, age, age depends. Else. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if grandma is coming, you can give them all the details. How long is she staying? Where will she be sleeping? What sort of things will she be doing? She might, she might read you stories and just, just kind of any facts. And then they're like, okay. Cool. And, and a little bit of time to process it. Mm. And a little bit of time to question and that sort of thing. They just need a little bit more time as well. Yeah. I think it's a security thing. Definitely. Yeah. I know what's happening. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um, I've had my questions answered. There's no unanswered questions. There's no whys. You know, why, why is grandma coming to stay? Well, grandma's coming to stay because her house is being renovated and, and it's too dusty there for her. Like, you've got to just give them those facts so that they yeah. can go, oh, okay. But, Otherwise, they're just in this cycle of, is something wrong? Is grandma okay? Yeah. Is she going to be here forever? You know. <laughs> is she sleeping in my no. bed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's the sensitive. Give them the details. And lastly, we have our structured natured children. So these are our responsible old souls and they need to be in charge of their own world. So again, they're seeking this level of control. So we've got the, the difference in control again, we've got a strong nature and a structure that really need control, but it's different. The strong nature likes to control others. The leader, I'll tell you what to do, the delegator. The structured likes to have control of themselves everything that they do they can do it themselves in their world and we call this having authority over themselves um, in the book so the mistake that parents make is micromanaging them and not giving them control mm. of their own business for example bedtimes i think we mentioned this um leaving them in charge of their own bedtime routine right. but giving them some boundaries so you might say bedtime is 8.30, but between 7.30 and 8.30, it's up to you what you want to do to get yourself ready for bed, as long as the lights are out. So you're kind of giving them that parameter, but you're leaving it up to them. Mm. So you're basically saying, I trust you to sort yourself out, but you also need to say, I'm here if you need me. So you're not leaving them on their own, like, you've got it, you, I, you don't even need me. You still want them to feel loved and cared for and that you're available, but you want to give them that level of respect that they're responsible for themselves. Um, another thing I kind of often see is parents micromanaging how they tidy their room. So you just need to leave that up to them and respect that how they want things, they can have things. So respect and authority over themselves. Um, giving them choices. So for younger children, give them a couple of choices and just say, it's up to you, whatever you choose, I'm happy with that and you give them the authority to make that choice. Giving them opportunities to make decisions about themselves, about what they like, and then really respecting those decisions. These, these kids are quite particular. They, they like to eat the same food over and over again. It doesn't bother them. And, you know, parents might come in and go, do, do you want to try something different? Like, you know, have a novelty in your, in your palate just realize that they are in charge of themselves and if they want to eat the same foods, that's just how they, that's just what, who they like. That's just their preference. That's their tendency. If they don't like their foods on their plate touching, then just honor that and just allow them to have that preference. Um, so again, it's with, with all of these mistakes, um, they are unintentional. We do it without realizing because we're a different nature than them most of the time. Um, yes. And it's really going back to what each of the highest needs are for each nature, which are all in the book. So yeah. if you're not making sure that they're getting these needs met, you're probably unintentionally making a mistake, which will put you at a disadvantage. I suppose, do these needs become more apparent, say, as 
as children get older and become teenagers and become a bit more boundary pushing and more finding themselves is that dynamic think, change yeah no i don't think they ever become more apparent they kind of definitely by the time they're a toddler is where you really start to see it because right. when children are in that stage toddlerhood and and teenagers there's there's a similarity here and it is i am independent and i want to be independent of you my parent so i'm going to do the opposite to yeah. show you that I am my own person. That's why there's so much literature on toddlers and teens. It's so written about. Everybody's just, they're, they're still scratching their heads. Yeah. What is it about toddlers and teens? They're just so difficult. Well, they're just saying to you, I'm not you, I'm me. And I'm gonna show you that I'm me by doing the opposite to what you want. So mm -hmm. these needs will become apparent and if you give them what they need, um, they're, they're much more cooperative. Yes. And there's always one nature that is more dominant than the rest. So someone might be listening and thinking, oh, it sounds like my child's a mixture of two of them. They may be more structured and strong, or structured and sensitive. Absolutely. We're always How a combination you, of yeah. two, but we lead with one. Yeah. So if parents are listening to this and they're still like, oh, gosh, I just don't know whether my child is a strong or a, um, a social, because they're definitely extroverted, but I can see kind of 50-50 of both of those. So then you want to look at their movement and their facial features as well. So we could do a whole nother video on, on facial features and we movement, could. but- If you want to learn quicker, get the book. Yeah, it's all in the book. <laughs> but, there, but there is a difference in movement. So if, if, if they don't know the difference between strong and social, the social's movement is more upward and bouncy and buoyant, and they're motivated by fun and surprises. They're a little bit more relaxed and cheeky, whereas the strong nature, they're like, um, get out of my way, I'm on a mission, I can do it myself, you know? Hurry up, let's go. There's more of, it's more intense movement. It's more of a push. Mm. Um, so those two often get confused, and the sensitive and structured will quite often get confused because they're both introverted, but the structure is definitely a lot quieter and a lot stiller and they're a lot more inward, they're a lot more thinking about themselves and how it all relates to them, whereas the sensitive are more cuddly and nurturing and they're more about kind and caring for people and they're more about how other people feel. And then there's a similarity between the social and the sensitive where they're both quite laid back, very easygoing, very cooperative. They just want people to be happy. Socials want happiness. Sensitives want people to be comfortable. They're good at making people feel comfortable. So there's those similarities. But again, the movement is different. And then, like I mentioned before, the strong and structured, they're both very strong natures. They're very strong willed. Um, but they they like control in different ways, like I mentioned earlier. So definitely, the more you learn about the natures, the more you read, the more you, the more you listen to these videos, you'll kind of start to see it, just start to ob observe your child, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can see that now. That's definitely them. And the more you honour them for who they are, the more that the more they will be that nature. So the more you say to your sensitive child, gosh, you're so funny. It just brings so much joy to our family. You wait, and when that child hears that from their parent, they just give them permission to be mm. themselves. Yeah, they'll just start it. coming up with all these funny gags, and they'll start making up words, and they'll just really come out of their shell and be themselves. And it's just so cool. I love it. Oh, that's exciting. Um, you touched on earlier um, how the parents' nature will interact with the child's nature and depending on how the child is and the parent is will depend on how you perceive it um mm. and you're going to be talking more about that in our final part aren't you yes i am i'm going to be talking about the parents natures um so it's it's just it's similar to to what we've the four mistakes we've spoken about today but it'll be more based on the parents so as a parent 
what mistakes do you make unintentionally because that's your nature? Mm. That's it. Because someone might be thinking about how their child isn't reacting to that, but you, it's also how we react as our nature. Exactly. How, our, what, what are our preferences? Yeah. You know, and if you're a structured parent and your preference is for peace and quiet and order and neatness, what, is, what does that mean for your children? How do they feel? Mm. Um, because they may see things completely different and your spouse probably sees it completely different as well. So it's about having that balance and getting your, your needs met as a structured parent, yeah. but also honouring the needs of all your other family members as well. Yeah, or oh, we could go down to marriage counselling and everything with this. We could. <laughs> we could. We'll get there. We will, but we'll leave it there and we will touch on part three next time. Sounds so good. Thank you for joining me again. See you then. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode. And please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you.